This entire year has been insane. No, not actually early advanced breast cancer. Actually, it's stage four metastatic breast cancer. I promise you that this conversation actually happened. I know people are gonna unsubscribe now because I probably sound like an insane person. Hello, everybody. My name is Samantha, and this is my cat's fault. One year ago today, on March 7th, 2019, I found out that I had breast cancer. Later, it was revealed that was stage four breast cancer. And it has been a year, let me tell you. It's been the longest year of my life. Recently, like in the past few weeks or so, I have been thinking about where I was a year ago. And that's mainly because I keep getting reminded of it because of my Snapchat memories. But my one year cancerversary is now, so I put a poll up on my channel and I asked you guys if you'd rather hear about my immediate thoughts and emotions after I found out I had cancer or if you'd rather hear about how I told my friends and family. And you guys chose the first option. Um, I might make another video about the second option sometime in the future. The story actually kind of has a little bit of drama in it, so if you are into that, leave a comment down below and maybe I'll make that video soon. In a few videos on my channel, I've mentioned that when I found out I was diagnosed with cancer, I never cried. And before I get a bunch of hate comments, I just want to address that there is no right reaction to finding out you have cancer. I'm not saying that crying is the wrong way to deal with a cancer diagnosis. I just want to make that very clear. I just didn't cry, and a lot of people have asked me why. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure, but I have got three reasons why I think that happened. I think that my story can be a little bit unique, so here I am telling it. <laughs> okay, so the first reason I think might have something to do with it is I was a little bit in shock. This is another thing that is different about my story than other people's that I have heard. I did not think that I was going to have cancer. I was told by many doctors that I was too young to have cancer and it's very common for young women to have cysts on their breasts so that's probably why I felt a bump and I believed all these people and I also myself just didn't think cancer would be a thing that happened to me because I thought I was a perfectly healthy 22 year old and I thought that if I had cancer then there would be something like blatantly obvious and wrong with me. I mean, especially stage four cancer, like geez. How could the only thing I noticed be this tiny lump? Who knows how long it's been there, but I just noticed it now and it's not that big of a deal. It's not affecting me that much. I was told that I should take Advil to try to reduce the swelling in my breast and to put a warm washcloth on it. And then when all that didn't work, I was told to take some antibiotics. And then when that didn't work, I got an ultrasound. And then the guy who read my ultrasound came in and told me that he's never seen breast cancer in a 22 year old. So that this probably wasn't breast cancer and it was probably some sort of infection or something. Then they sent me to the breast surgeon and the breast surgeon did a biopsy. The very first biopsy I had done was just like a fine needle aspiration and it wasn't the whole full core needle biopsy thing. It came back and said that there were atypical cells found. I didn't really know what that meant, but she told me that I had to come back in for another biopsy. So I went in and that's when she, I think started to try to prepare me that this could likely be cancer. She drew me a picture and she started explaining how cells normally form in the milk ducts in your breast and how they can break out and how things can happen, it can be cancer. And cancer cells are a type of atypical cell. And I think that's probably what she wanted me to take away from that conversation, that there was a real chance that I could have cancer, but that's not what I took away from that conversation at all because also in the conversation she said something like, there's one type of atypical cell that's not cancerous. So it could be that. And when she said that, I was like, oh, well obviously it's that. So my whole mindset going into the day that I was told you have cancer um, was that it's probably not cancer. I've heard so many people tell the story where they know something's wrong and they know they need to keep getting it checked and they know that it's cancer, like deep down they know it's cancer. And that's not what happened with me at all. So when I was told you have cancer, 
there could have been a little bit of shock there and that could be part of the reason why I didn't cry because it was kind of just like oh wow I really was not expecting that news. When I was told I had cancer, I also assumed that it wasn't super serious cancer. I assumed I assumed it couldn't be that crazy. So, I mean, finding out things about my diagnosis came in steps. I was told atypical cells, I was told cancer cells, then I was told early advanced breast cancer, and then I was told no, not actually early advanced breast cancer, actually it's stage four metastatic breast cancer. Each step wasn't that much greater than the first step in my mind because my mind didn't immediately go to, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing ever. My mind immediately went to, okay, this is probably the least serious thing. So yeah. A little bit of shock when I was told I had cancer because I just did not think that. So that could be part of the reason I didn't cry. This second point that I have is gonna kind of contradict the first point I have, but like, listen to my full explanation before you judge me. The second reason I think I may have not cried when I found out about my diagnosis is way, way, way deep down, deep in my brain, deep in my heart, deep in whatever, I had a feeling that something like this was coming. And to understand why I say that, you're gonna have to understand more of the kind of person I was before I found out I was diagnosed. So we're gonna do a little bit of a backstory. We're gonna go back to the fall of 2017. I was starting my last year of college and it was the most stressful semester that I ever had. It was the hardest point in my life um, for a lot of different reasons. Maybe I will make that video sometime down the road, but I am not ready to tell that story. And then also in that time, I started dating Gray, my boyfriend. Then I graduated in May 2018. And then in July 2018, I started working at my first job. I was still living close by to where I went to school, and Gray was still going to school because he is a year younger than me in school. I was still living with my two roommates that I was living with the year before because they as well are a year younger than me in school. So they were still going to college too. So I was still around some of my best friends and stuff, um, but I was just not attending the school. I was just working like a normal working person. When I was attending school, my life was super stressful and now I was just watching other people be stressed. There was only one thing that was kind of stressing me out and it was that Gray was not sure what he wanted to do after graduation. So we had no idea whether he was going to be working somewhere far away from me. But then he decided that he wanted to apply to law school and he wanted to apply to law school at the same college that we were at. And then he got in, so then all of that uncertainty went away and I knew that Gray was gonna be around for the next three years and I had this job. And basically, everything slowed down. Everything was kind of falling into place, you could say. January 2019 is when Gray found out he was accepted into law school. And then we went out to dinner one day or something, and before he dropped me back off at my apartment, we sat in his car for a while and we had a conversation. I promise you that this conversation actually happened. So basically I was telling him how I was bored. In high school and in college, I was always doing my schoolwork and doing extracurricular activities where I was always staying up super late trying to fit in everything that I needed to get done so that I would get good grades, that I'd be able to hang out with friends, and that I would still be able to do the things that I enjoyed doing. And while that was stressful, I kind of enjoyed it. I missed having so much to do. Um, my job wasn't very stressful. I was enjoying what I was doing, but it wasn't very stressful. I was just going to work, coming home, doing things on my computer, or hanging out with friends, and then going to sleep and I had all this free time and I didn't know what to do with it. One of the things that I said to him in the car that day was, I know that I'm going to look back at this time in my life and remember how simple it was. So I know that I should be trying to enjoy it while I have it. I said that in the car that day. He started asking me some questions. You know, you have this free time now. What could you do with your free time that would be fun for you, that you would enjoy doing? And I thought about it because it had been a while since I had real free time, but 
what I used to do in middle school and in high school and partially in college over the summers was I made YouTube videos. I made videos with my American Girl dolls. They were stop motion videos and stuff. Some of you that are watching this know me from that YouTube channel. And so he said, would that be something that you want to start again? And I thought about it and I said, you know, maybe, maybe I could start that again, but I really don't want to make doll videos anymore. I've kind of grown out of that and it's a lot of work and I kind of would just enjoy making other types of videos, maybe just like explaining things that I know or doing some sort of blog or something. He said, well, why don't you do that? And I was like, yeah, I guess I could try doing that. I don't really know what kinds of videos that I would want to make. And also, the other thing I said was, there's not anything super unique about me that would make people want to listen to me. <laughs> That's what I said. I said that I wasn't a very interesting person. I didn't have any unique thing happening in my life and why would anyone want to watch videos of me? And you know, he came back with, you don't have to do it for other people, you can just do it for yourself. And I said, yeah, that's true, but I would still have to come up with something that I actually want to make videos about, and right now I can't think of anything. And we talked about that for a while, and we talked about some other things too. But the third thing that I said that I wanna bring up is I said, it feels like something big is about to happen. He of course asked me what I meant by that and I said, I don't know, it just seems like my life shouldn't be this easy or this boring and it seems like I might be about to get hit with something really stressful. I'm not exactly sure if those are the exact words that I used because obviously this conversation was not written down or anything, but we talked about all of those things and to me it's insane <laughs> that I had that conversation so close to when I was diagnosed with cancer and so close to when I started a YouTube channel talking about cancer and probably half of you that are watching this video are gonna like comment and tell me that I'm making that up that that conversation didn't actually happen but I am telling you Gray can tell you that that conversation happened <laughs> and wow major life foreshadowing that's all I have to say so right before I was diagnosed with cancer there was a feeling that I had deep down that something was about to happen and it was gonna be big. And this sounds so bad to say, I don't even know if I'm gonna put this in this video, so if you're seeing this, like, don't yell at me for this. But I just kept thinking, oh my gosh, who's going to die? Like, I was so worried that something drastic like that was going to happen because that's how sure I was that something big was going to happen. I didn't know what it was, I didn't think it was gonna be cancer. I definitely couldn't have predicted that and I definitely couldn't have predicted that I was gonna get cancer. And that was still a shock. But deep down I did have a feeling leading up to the day I was diagnosed that something big was about to happen. So when it happened it was kind of like I was expecting this so maybe that's why I didn't cry. In a way it was kind of like a relief. It was kind of like oh this is what it's supposed to be obviously like this is the big thing that's gonna happen to me. I know people are gonna unsubscribe now because I probably sound like an insane person but yeah. The third reason why I think I didn't cry after finding out I was diagnosed with cancer is that I immediately accepted it. Q. Qe. You need to calm down. You need to stop meowing. Shh. Yes. Okay. Meow, 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 meow. I have always, always, always believed that everything happens for a reason and that sometimes you don't know what the reason is right away, but as you keep pushing on in your life, you sometimes find out what the reason is, and maybe sometimes you don't, but I still believe that there is a reason. So when I was diagnosed with cancer, it was kind of like, I don't know why this is happening, but I trust that it's happening for a reason, and one day I might 
find out what the reason is. And the other thing that kind of goes off of this is that there are just so many other times in my life when I have felt more frustrated than how I felt when I found out I had cancer, where I felt like something was just so completely unfair. And usually, probably all the time that happened was when something didn't happen to me, but happened to someone that I care a lot about. To me, it's so much more upsetting when you see something happen to someone you love. There's a bigger reason than we know for a lot of the things that happen to us and a lot of the things that happen to people we love. And so then when this happened to me, I just immediately accepted it and just moved on with it and had that mindset. I had the mindset of, I can believe that this is unfair or I can believe that this is happening for a reason. And that's what I chose and I chose it pretty immediately. I chose to trust the bigger plan that there is for me and just go with it. I think that's the biggest reason why I didn't cry initially that day. Like I said, I'm not saying that people who do cry don't come to that realization and that people who do cry aren't positive people. They are and they do. It's just that some people react differently in certain situations and I'm just trying to justify to you why I didn't cry so you guys don't think I'm a heartless freak. I basically was like, this is how my life's gonna be. And when I went to that meeting with my breast surgeon and I learned how serious it was, I learned that I was gonna have to have chemotherapy and surgery and radiation. And I was okay with it. I was like, okay, this doesn't sound like anything I can't handle. Throughout this entire year, I have gotten sad. I have cried. Um, but that day, I was very positive. The thing that upset me the most that day was when we were in that meeting, I looked around and I saw my mom and my dad and my boyfriend. I saw their faces. I saw them asking questions and getting that information and realizing all the things that I was going to have to go through and seeing how much that hurt them. That was something that I really didn't expect because I know how much I feel for other people and I know how hard it is for me to see things happen to people that I care about. But I never thought about the opposite of that. I never thought about how hard it is for people that care about me to see me go through hard things. So that was the hardest thing that I had to deal with and that was the only thing that made me a little upset was realizing that this was going to be hard for my family and my friends and my boyfriend. I got a lot of new information that day but it is nothing compared to the amount of information I got over the course of the next few weeks, the next months, this whole year. And if I got all of that information, every single piece of information that I now know now, that day, then it would have been a lot more overwhelming. <laughs> it was still really overwhelming, but it would have been insane. Um, I basically, my mindset that day was this is going to be hard, but I'm going to get through it and then my life will go back to normal. If someone had said to me that day, your life will never be the same again, then maybe like it would have caused a little bit more emotion from me. And I now know that my life won't ever be the same again and that has been hard some days. That has been the thing that has made me cry. Just thinking about how I'm not going to have energy for a very long time when I'm on this medication that I'm currently on because there's nothing they can do to stop fatigue. They can stop nausea with medicine. They can stop diarrhea with medicine. They can't stop fatigue with anything. And so that has made me upset some days. And the other thing that has made me upset is that I am losing my eyebrows, guys. <laughs> Where are they going? <laughs> this medicine is causing hair loss in basically every place except my head hair. It 
there's no hair on my arms, there's barely hair on my legs, and my eyebrows and my eyelashes are disappearing. So that has been upsetting to me because I thought that once I finished IV chemo that all my hair would come back and it did come back for a short period of time and then I started this new medication and it's going away again. So that has been upsetting to me but honestly when I really stop and I think about it and this happens every time I get upset, this isn't the worst situation in the world. I still have an amazing life. I'm still going to fight every day. I still have amazing friends, amazing family, the most amazing, incredible boyfriend in the entire world. And I know that I'm going to be fine. There are so many harder things that I could be having to deal with right now. Um, this entire year has been insane and if you want more of a glimpse into my life, check out some of the other videos on my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. If you've made it this long into this video then you probably like me or something so <laughs> you should subscribe and follow along with my cancer adventures. If you think my channel will help anyone, if you know anyone going through cancer, please feel free to share it with them. And yeah. That's all. Bye.